What's up? This is Mitchell Klein. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will be talking about shortcuts and hotkeys in FL Studio. I'm going to be showing the ones that I use on a daily basis and which helps me improve my workflow. And I hope it will improve your workflow too. For this video, I opened up a project that I'm working on. It's just a raw idea, just a loop for for 15 seconds. But uh, a shortcut that I use a lot is F6, which opens up the channel rack in an instant and let it disappear. So that's F6. Then we have F7 to view the piano roll. F8 is for the plugin picker. So you can easily scroll, scroll to the plugins that you are using. And if you want to use one, double click on it and it opens up immediately. This also works for effect plugins. So that's F8. And then we have F9 to open up the mixer track, which I use a lot. And the last one is F12, and this will close all the windows that you have open. So let's bring back the playlist with F5. All right, so that's, that's our basically the most basic uh, shortcuts in FL Studio. If you have a keyboard with numbers on the right side of the keyboard, like a numeric keyboard, uh, you can also use some of the knobs right there. For example, the plus goes to the next pattern, as you can see right here, and minus goes to the previous pattern. And this also works with numbers. So pattern one, if I press two, goes to pattern two, press three, it goes to pattern three, four, etc. Okay, so in the playlist, one of the shortcuts that I use a lot is control B. If you loop a part and you press Ctrl B, it will clone the whole section. But if you only want to clone some elements, you can create a loop and then select the ones that you want to clone. For example, I want pattern one and the kick only to clone Ctrl B and it will automatically duplicate them. So this can be a great way to um, lay down an arrangement real quick. In the channel rack, if you want to copy some MIDI notes or something, you can select the channel Ctrl C, which is al always copy, and then Ctrl V, paste it. And there's also Ctrl X and this removes it. So if you want to quickly remove a whole MIDI notes, then you can press those. For the next shortcut, let's open up the piano roll. Now you see I have um, some short notes right here. Because it's a pretty short synth step. But if I was working with a pad or something and I would like to extend all the notes uh, at a point that they touch each other. We can use Ctrl L for a quick legato. Or we can use Alt L and we get some options. Like a gap that leaves a little gap at the end of every note. This is a thing that I use uh, a lot in my productions. So I hope it can be helpful for you too. All right, and if you played some MIDI notes, but they're not precisely on the grid, there's the quantization mode. Ctrl Q is quick quantize, but if you press Alt Q, you have much more uh, options. Because here you can choose from all different kinds of templates. And you can see that the lines are changing. You can change the start time, 
sensitivity of your quantization, the duration, and even control the velocities and panning and all that other stuff, what's in here. If you want to create an arpeggiator real quick, you can draw in the notes which you would like to use. In this case, I want to use this one, these three notes. Now you can press Alt A, and it opens up the arpeggiator screen. So let's play it first. And you also have the options to choose from different presets. You can get really crazy with this and I think this is a great tool to uh, boost your creativity and uh, discover arpeggios that you wouldn't have made yourself. Talking about not making stuff yourself, there's a randomized tool which is Alt R. And this instantly uh, randomizes notes for you. So let's play it. All right, let's head over to the chopping shortcut. You can use Ctrl U, which creates a quick chopping effect. Which is pretty basic, but if you hit Alt U, you have some options right here. So I clicked through some random presets and you can hear that it creates really cool stuff. Okay, now some shortcuts to organize your stuff. So if you want to move certain plugins, you can press shift and then scroll and move them around the channel rack. And this also works for the playlist, for the patterns. So if you're making a beat and you have like I don't know, 20, 20 patterns. 
and you're creating a beat, then you're creating a melody, you're creating a bass line, it gets all over the place. This is a way that you can organize it. And for instance, put the beat uh, elements on top, then maybe the synth melodies, background stuff, effects, etc. So this works for patterns, but also for audio clips, automation clips, whatever. And also for the mixer track, this works the same way. So hold shift, scroll, and you can move around. Keep in mind though that the mixer track uh, works in a way that the effect on top will be the first and it will work its way down uh, effect wise. So try to keep a logical positioning for all your effects. Another thing you can do while holding shift is when you scroll on an audio clip, you can move the audio clip in its uh, instance itself. But if you use shift next to it, you can also move the whole audio clip. In the piano roll, if you use the scroll button, you just scroll to the screen. But if you use shift, you can place the notes really precise. So if you want them to be just behind the grid or before the grid, this is a cool way to do it. And if you hold Alt and then scroll, you could change the parameters over here. So you don't have to adjust it manually by clicking, but you can just hold all and then scroll and change the velocity or the panning. And for me, this saves a lot of time because I want to make it interesting and to keep uh, like a human touch. And this way I can just go through the sounds and instantly change the parameters. So these were my favorite shortcuts that I use on a daily basis in Apple Studio. I hope it was useful to you and it, I hope it can improve your workflow too. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.